just chilling on my floaty. Whoa, I didn't see you there. Recently, I've been really curious about how buoyancy works. You know, like how things float in water and stuff. Honestly, I was never taught this properly in school, so I decided to dive in, no pun intended, and figure it out myself. This video is all about what I learned and how I tried simulating buoyancy in Unity. First, let's define buoyancy. Buoyancy is the ability or tendency of an object to float in water, or any fluid. The force responsible for that is called the buoyant force, and it depends on three things. The density of the fluid, in this case water, the volume of the object that's submerged, and gravity. So now that we have the basics down, let's jump into Unity to try to simulate this. I started with a basic cube. My goal is to build a buoyancy system that works not just for cubes, but for any shape or object. But my first challenge was figuring out how to calculate the submerged volume. Unity doesn't have a built-in function to find like a submerged volume or volume in general. My first idea was to shoot rays horizontally from each point on the surface of the object. If a ray hits water, I assume that it's submerged, but it didn't work like that. Because the rays were inside the water collider, they didn't register as hitting it. It's just one of those small things about using an engine that you can't really get over. So I swapped out the rays for overlapping spheres. It basically placed little sphere colliders around the object to check if they intersect with water. This worked better, but it still wasn't good enough. Why? Because these spheres mostly hug the surface of the object. So while this method was good for estimating the surface area, it didn't give me the volume of how much the object was actually underwater. So instead, I had Unity checkpoints inside the object. Imagine a 3D grid filling the object. Each point in the grid checks if it's inside the water. And then by multiplying the number of submerged points by the space between them, we get a pretty good estimate of the submerged volume. Then using the formula for buoyant force, I applied an upward force to the object. Now the cube bobs up and down in the water. But there was a problem. It kept bobbing forever. Realistically, objects slow down in water due to drag or water resistance. So I simulated water resistance using the formula negative velocity times a drag coefficient. Now the cube slows down over time as it moves through water, just like it should. But another issue came up. When I rotated the cube, it didn't naturally tip back to its flat side. It's because of where I was applying the buoyant force. Originally, I just applied it at the center of mass, but that's not how real buoyancy works. Instead, we should be applying the buoyant force from the center of buoyancy. The center of buoyancy is where the center of the submerged part of an object is, but we'll come back to that later. I tried a new approach of using the mesh vertices of an object. A vertex is a corner point of a triangle on a mesh. My thinking was maybe this could help me estimate volume for more complex shapes, but that didn't work either. Vertices only describe the surface, not the inside of an object. Maybe there was a way to be able to get the volume from the, these vertices, but I couldn't figure out one. So again, I went back to the grid method. This time, I added a new check to the calculations. Now, each point also verifies if it actually intersects with the object. That way, even when the object is rotated, I'm accurately measuring only the volume that's inside the object and underwater. Now, I had a better working estimate of the submerged volume, and I applied the buoyant force at the center of buoyancy, like mentioned before. Even after all this, the cube still didn't naturally rotate upright. I think the reason for this is because of the angular drag. As a quick fix, I added a small torque to estimate this behavior and nudge the object upright. It's not realistic yet, but it's getting closer. Still a bit stuck, I checked out how other people simulated buoyancy in Unity. One common method used multiple float points, usually at the corners of an object, instead of calculating submerged volume. And this method doesn't even use fluid density entirely, but honestly, it's the best result so far. But I want this to be more than just good enough. I want a simulation that's as close to real life physics as I can get. So I went back to the grid method, but I changed my approach one final time. Instead of using spheres to detect if the mesh is in the water, I switched to voxels. Voxels are essentially cubes, but it's a much more accurate representation of a submerged volume. Think of it like a pixel. Pixels aren't circular, they're square. With this new approach, we get a beautiful simulation of our realistic buoyancy system. This is how far I took the system, I know there's some tweaks I could have made, but I'm happy with the results. I had a lot of fun learning about how buoyancy works, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.